What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I give my honest review of Horizon Forbidden West. Just like my other reviews, I like to let the dust settle before I give my official score to be revealed to the public. Does Horizon Forbidden West meet the hype that comes with being a Sony exclusive? Does it match the stardom compared to Horizon Zero Dawn? And is this game a game of the year candidate? I answer all this and more, so stick around. This is Marsman Gaming. I remember when this game was supposed to come out in the fall of 2021 and I honestly thought that if this game did come out last year, it would have definitely been a top two contender for game of the year guaranteed. Even though this game was delayed, I still was excited to see what the game would eventually look like when it was released. Because honestly, when you watch the state of play events, this game looked phenomenal and I was just excited to see how the game actually was played. I definitely felt positive about this game. Definitely when you look at the era of modern gaming where things are half released or half broken, this was definitely a sight for sore eyes. But that being said, there are definitely some flaws in this game that need to be addressed. When I made my review of this game, I broke it down into the positives and the negatives. So let's start off with the positives. The first thing I noticed right away is the gameplay. The gameplay of this game is phenomenal. It really opens up the floodgates on what is possible in an open world game. Forbidden West really gives you ability to do whatever you want in the open world. This game gives you so many different types of weapons you can use. It gives you eight skill trees that you can customize Aloy with. And the movement mechanics are just top notch. What I liked about this game was the fact that it really opened it up so it's more like an Assassin's Creed in a way. Now granted it doesn't mean you can just jump anywhere you want but it gives Aloy a lot more movement and the combat styles are just a way more efficient than it was in the previous game. Obviously facing off against robotic dinosaurs is going to be cool either way but the fact that they gave you even more different types of them is even better than the previous game. Facing off against all these different dinosaurs basically gives you the ability to pick and choose your method of combating them and I like the fact that each one has their weaknesses and strengths and it's really up to you to find the best way to get around that. I mean, when I talk about different types, I mean, you're playing off against elephants, alligators, rhinos, raptors, even pterodactyls. What I like about this game is it took what wasn't broken in Zero Dawn and then just upgraded it for Forbidden West. The next major positive that I'll talk about is going to be the biome and the environment. The fact is, this is one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen definitely so far on the new generation. When I make my comparison to what this game was like for this generation, I look at The Witcher 3 and what it was for the Xbox One PS4 generation, where that game looked top notch, way better than anything else in its same genre. One of the best parts about the game is that when you're looking at the environments in the grand landscapes, you really get the feeling that, wow, Gorilla really put a lot of, a lot of detail into this game. Probably one of the best parts about the environment of this game is that not only is it stunning, but there's literally so much to do here. There's around 15 types of missions that you can complete, whether it's main story missions or side story missions, and it just feels like there's always something to do. And I'm not even mentioning the mini games that are present. Most of the time, the biggest fears that we have in an open world game are basically trying to find a way that we don't feel repetitive in what we do on a daily basis. But Forbidden West not only solves that problem, but they expand upon it where sometimes you feel like you're a little overwhelmed. All in all, I feel like the most hours I've seen in this game that is taken to complete all the missions is close to 80 to 100. So that's a lot of time and you're going to be playing great gameplay along with it. So that's a good sign here. The last major positive I'll talk about for this section is going to be the fact that we need to really appreciate Aloy and some of these side characters in the way that they're developed. To be honest, I always liked Aloy as a main character. She has a lot of good charm, character development, and just some cool lines throughout the previous installment and this one too. I felt like she's earned the respect of being a Sony exclusive main character and just being a face of Sony. Some of the other characters also have a pretty good development too. Even though some of them may not have a lot of impact on the major parts of the story, the look of them is phenomenal. 
as in you definitely have to give gorilla a lot of credit for basically taking the time and effort to really use facial recognition on literally hundreds of characters including aloy the voice acting of this game was great and i feel as if it gives you that real immersion that you're in this environment and i just felt like it felt natural the only issue i saw was honestly with aloy's hair because it never stayed in place and honestly, I felt like it was just such a weird glitch to see here. Now, with the positives being as good as it is, we definitely need to mention some negatives because there are some flaws in this game that have to be addressed. So let's start off with the story. Generally, when I look at this game, I felt like they were going to try to expand upon the lore from the previous installment and try to give this world even more density than we saw in the previous game. There aren't really a lot of negatives of the story, but there is a major problem with the pacing. With the gameplay being as good as it is, there were actual times that I felt bored. The first half of the game basically was a content review of Zero Dawn's story. Only when you got to meet the new faction did the game really start to get interesting. And it kind of is a pretty bad sign that basically you lose all momentum from the very starting mission to basically have to wait until at least around 10 hours into the game before you get really hooked. And that's something that has to be addressed here. The problem is, is that not necessarily did you not have fun in the first half, but I felt like there was not really much importance to what you were doing in the first half of the game. Only when did you meet that second group did really things start to really cook up and you just now had a reason to keep playing. There are a lot of people who I talked to who just had struggles keeping up with this kind of slow start and they never really got to experience the game entirely because it just were turned off right in the very beginning unfortunately this game feels as if it was trying to be a build-up game to either new dlc or the next installment and you have to agree that that's a negative because so by you buying this game to basically only be ready for the next installment that is definitely a negative I see here. And lastly, with the story, I felt as if some of the villains had very bare bones reasons for doing what they were doing. I really liked the new group that you added, but some of them felt like their motives didn't really match the backstory that they were really setting up. Going along with the story, the negative I also see is the problem of dialogue. They have some great voice acting in this game, but the problem I notice is the writing of this dialogue that you have between every NPC and side mission really drags the game quite a lot. Every time you have a conversation in this game, it feels like you're having a 10 to 15 minute content dump thrown on you and, and honestly it just drags out so long that you feel just tired afterward now i understand where they're trying to bring this concept with the witcher 3 where you have a dialogue wheel and every single conversation starter or conversation point brings you more into the story itself but there's a big difference between the two every time you have a conversation in this game with an npc it feels as if nothing really changes and a lot of the content they're talking about doesn't really add to the side story when you play the witcher 3 every time you have a side panel you talk to a person with basically it creates an entire subplot that goes along with that and it can actually drastically change how that side mission goes or even how main missions go based on which conversation you have with the NPC. And I felt like it was a cool concept because The Witcher 3 is probably one of the best open world games of all time, but you didn't really land on what you were trying to do. Now, I'm sure some of you may be saying, Mars, you're probably overreacting a little bit, but I'll honestly tell you that some of these conversations I had were clocked around 10 minutes long and had sometimes had zero impact whatsoever. Trust me, I like the fact that you wanna build the lore between different characters, but you have to actually have some importance on what we're talking about. The biggest problem I see of this game, and you can kind of use this with the previous two points, is the pacing. Forbidden West was really struggling with the idea of how do you find the happy medium between the a lot of content talks and the great gameplay that you developed. Most games I see or play usually have a combination of 30% cutscenes and 70% gameplay. It feels though that Forbidden West fell along the lines of 50% cutscenes and 50% gameplay and you can really feel that drag on when you're just trying to play the game. What's crazy is this game has top-notch gameplay, 
but unfortunately, it feels as if a lot of it's dragged down through cutscenes. And I'll give you a perfect example. One of the earlier parts of the game, you're going to be facing off against some rival tribes. The, the part of the game is really cool. There's a lot of cutscenes that show you fighting against these groups and basically they're killing each other. The problem is that most of the cut, most of the event itself is cutscenes. When they finally throw you into the gameplay, and I got all hyped on stream when this was happening, I only had maybe three, four minutes of actual fighting, and then it just sends me right back to cutscenes where I could have been playing those parts. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You can have conversations happen while you're fighting, and it just feels as if you're taking it away to show off this beautiful screen that you have, this great cutscenes that you have, but you can just have me play the game and I could still be amazed by how your writing is. The biggest issue is pacing. And if they fix that, then a lot of these problems probably wouldn't have occurred. And lastly, I'll mention is the music. Unfortunately, this game falls into a, a problem of being almost like a silent movie when it comes to installing music. The first part where you get the title screen was great when it comes to their music usage. But after that, they, you really didn't hear much at all of any soundtracks. And if you look at the album itself, there's a lot of things to go with. But it just feels as if they did a poor job at really adding in any songs to really heighten the mood of what you were playing. In my final verdict, I feel as if this game has some great core gameplay and it's definitely headed in the right direction. The story is pretty solid and it's going to get you hyped to play the next DLC and next installment, so that's a good sign. This game is also one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen, and it definitely takes the cake for the best looking game on the next gen consoles. With that being said, the game definitely struggles with keeping a lot of the player's attention with this slow developing story. Its pacing issues become pretty evident instead of you playing as Aloy, you're just watching Aloy. All around, this game is pretty good. And honestly, I think it's one of the top level open world games we've seen. Granted, I don't think it's a top 10 open world game of all time, but I think it's a great one and I would highly recommend it. For my rating, I'm giving this game a nine out of 10. It has a lot of bright spots and definitely some negatives. I'm looking forward to the next installment in this game, but if they don't fix the pacing issues and some of the other flaws I mentioned, then the next game will just be a overhyped mess rather than a transcendent open world game. It meets the standards of the previous installment, but in my opinion, I still think Zero Dawn is a better game all around. Is this game a game of the year contender? Well, so far it still meets the list, but I'm waiting to see what happens next because we do know there are some games like Elden Ring and apparently God of War and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 are coming out. So it should be quite interesting of a year. Well, guys, that's going to be it for the video. Please make sure if you haven't done so yet, you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And please make sure you follow me on social media on both Discord and Twitter. And those are located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace.